Hello there, Stefan and Martin here from Schildwache Potsdam. Today to present you historical tactics to win a sword fight. And in this we are now at the third part of our series on Angelo Vigiani, a historical fencing master of the 16th century that probably served at the court of the emperor of the Holy Roman Empire. So he dedicated his book in his time to Charles V and since the manual was uh, published posthumously, so after his death, uh, it got dedicated to Maximilian II. So he gives us three really great pointers along with a lot of good, of uh, good body mechanics and a really nice play to, to start your fencing career. He gives us these really nice tactics and basically if we are wanting to strike, well, first, we always uh, should make sure that we are not just looking for openings, but we're also looking for the opponent's sword. So never just going for the hit, always keeping in mind not getting hit in return. But then we also should strive for three advantages to attack more securely. What are these uh, three advantages? Well, they are the advantage of guard, the advantage of attacking and the advantage of stepping. Let's start with the advantage of attacking. He says we should only attack when we have the advantage of attacking. That is that we can reach our opponent with a step or a passing step at the most. So an extension of our front foot or at the most a passing step with our rear leg. That means in conclusion that this white measure should be the thing we are striving for. From here we should attack where we can either just extend with a lunge for example or like I said at the most with a passing step. If we attack from anywhere further this would be really dangerous. So now you, you are going to demonstrate what happens when you attack from way out there. Well, it's dangerous because the attack can be seen from a mile away, meaning that I have a lot of time to prepare my counter and defend with a counter thrust in the same tempo, so in the same motion, ending this fight immediately. But attacking from one step away measure or a passing step away measure also means not getting into closer distance where we can already reach each other. Why? Well, I like to say this is the point of no return basically. So if we're here and I strike, of course, it's really hard already for my opponent to defend this, but it's for me as well already really hard if I'm in a stillness here now to defend myself even if I have maybe some uh, some positional advantage that we will talk in a minute about but if my opponent from here just advances and, is, uh, and attacks to my leg I have a really short time to get out here and parry or even if they advance even further I can't go back anymore so this is really dangerous and it's a bit exaggerated if we are just both standing in guardia alta seconda offensiva <laughs> and now perfetta and we are now really close basically there's no way for me to defend this while there's no way for stefan to defend my thrust from above so this is really stupid okay so we have to keep this in mind and i probably will make another video about this while it's uh, stupid to get into that measure and not attack your opponent okay all right so this is the first advantage always tr strive for the other advantages while you're in the measure of attacking them with one step at the most okay second one is the advantage of guard this can be really easily summarized into if your blade's pointing at the opponent and the other blade is not pointing at you, then you have the advantage of guard. Or for Stefan, it's now the disadvantage of guard if we are standing in a position like this. Okay. So, since, and uh, Vijani says it, since our opponents are mostly not stupid, 
they try to get the advantage of God as well. So how do we get the advantage for ourselves? Well, he gives basically three methods. The first is by using Mezzi, Mandriti and Riversi, so half cuts. Cuts that leave your point in presence towards the opponent. So for example, either beating the opponent's sword, now it doesn't point towards me anymore, while my sword points towards my opponent, I would be in the advantage of attack as well here, striking with an extension of my foot. Okay. Or with the mezzo reversus, the same thing. Now the opponent's sword points towards my right, can't reach me anymore, and I can extend towards my attack. We we'll have to make sure that all tempi we take to get an advantage of guard, that's basically already a provocation. So in that step of getting this advantage, my opponent can do something as well. And that basically is also a tempo for me to react and strike them. So for example, Stefan's plan could be, plan could be to wait for my, my beat disengage and thrust on the other side. So from here, disengage, thrust on the other side. So this would be his plan. Using that tempo, that motion of my initial beat against me. I know that this is a tempo. So what I'll do, I know that this will be coming and I use that motion of him to strike my own blow. Okay. So always when you're trying to get an advantage, be aware that you give your opponent motions to attack you and this really nicely reflects in Giovanni de Lagocchi as well. Provocations are to be formed to either get an advantage to attack your opponents more securely from or to incite them to attack you. Okay and that's also a tempo that you can you then abu use and strike them with more safety. Okay so mezzo mandrito mezzo reverso. The second one is by employing footwork on the diagonal, so stepping off the line basically. So if Stefan just gets a bit more around here. There are two ways to do that. Either by, of course, stepping away from the line. And now, since now this blade points at me, now it doesn't anymore. Okay, making this attack a bit more secure. But there's also stepping into the line. So for example, stepping in the here to get a greater physical advantage over this blade from where you can attack. Okay, so we are basically doing some circular footwork and if you're studying Destresa already, you will find this very familiar, but it's, I'm sorry to say, but the Italian did it first. So um, you can go in here, strike, and if the opponent once again disengage, you combine this with the thing we just did before and go in all around here. Okay, and from the other side, basically, it would be the same as well. So we could just go here, going around, using their tempi of so their motions against them. The third, and that's a really big topic, so I don't want to go into too much detail now here. That is uh, getting the advantage by the use of feints. So feints are attacks that are not committed and should incite your opponent either again to strike you or to defend. So, for example, in a, a typical feint to incite the opponent to defend would be something like attacking them with a thrust. There's an opening, so I'll anticipate that motion now. And um, don't let them make contact, strike around and get out here. Okay? And by this, I gained the advantage of guard because since Stefan now defends, his po uh, point of the blade points to the right of me and it stays that way through the whole action. Okay, that's the advantage of guard. The third bit is the advantage of stepping. And it's basically if your feet are on the ground and you are in range and you have the advantage of guard, then you have also the advantage of stepping because now you are free to move in any direction you like. 
In contrast, you have the disadvantage of stepping if you are just in the air, which also reflects to Giovanni Dallagorchi's tempo of striking the opponent when they are just lifting their front foot. Okay? So basically, if I go into this motion here, I want to get my feet to the ground as quickly as possible by doing small steps, okay? If I do just a really big step, holy shit, I don't want to do it, but then probably I'll get killed in the meantime because my tempo, my motion is just so big, okay? My opponent doesn't even need to, to engage my blade here and just can disengage, go around, strike to the other side. So it's really stupid, so don't do that. And the last bit of advice on the advantage of stepping is that with your feet closer together you have more potential for a long long advance a long lunge basically so just uh, just imagine my back foot stands here and i want to attack stefan well i probably can't because even if i go for a really long lunge well this almost doesn't hit and it's a really huge tempo but if i move my back foot a bit closer now while my body marginally shifted forward the tempo the motion i need to extend my front foot is way smaller okay i have a bigger potential for a longer reach basically so what we want to do is small steps keeping our feet comfortably together going for mezzo mandriti and mezzo riversi striving for the advantage of guard opponent's blade points beside us while our blade points towards the opponent provoking our opponent to then strike them and idly if you now want to use angelo vigiani's perfect play you do this to incite them to strike you, to then cover with the perfect defense and strike them with the perfect offense, of course. So, for example, we're here. We are out of range, so no advantages are to be taken. I get into range, I defend, and I even pass with the left foot, which wouldn't be really necessary. But I strike my perfect blow, covering the opponent's blade. Okay? Let's do it a bit more Vigiani-like with the right foot in front all the time. So from here, covering that blow, advancing and covering that sword all the way through. So you are safe while the opponent gets struck. Sounds good, right? Okay, so these are the three basic advantages that you want to strive for if you are in a sword fight. In the next video, we'll have a look at the common or um, maybe imperfect plays of the usual fencing masters in that time. Until then, take care and ciao.